My name is Alex Amanti. I'm the field CTO here at uh, Fortinet. I'm going to be doing a demonstration of our SASE product uh, called FortiSASE. Um, you know, our inventive naming scheme can tell you exactly what it is by just putting 40 and whatever it does right after that. <laughs> Um, so this is the demo environment that I have right here uh, that, that we're going to be looking at. And we'll talk about some of the traffic flows and how things may work, because I think uh, we had some questions about that earlier. Um, in, this, in this environment, I have some on-prem and off-prem users. Uh, on-prem, I have over here, I've got Mark, who's in engineering, and Katie, who is also in engineering, uh, over here. On, and they're basically connected into the SD-WAN network um, that we saw earlier. Um, on the remote side, we have two other users, also in IT and engineering, Rob and Ron. I wish I'd have chosen better names for them because I get confused because it's just one letter different. Uh, but you know, that's my problem to deal with. Um, and they're obviously you know remote. They could be at home. They could be at a cafe somewhere. Um, but this is ne definitely the world that we're living in today. You know, we have definitely have a hybrid environment. Um, you know, we before the pandemic, we still we certainly had one, but it was not top of mind. It is absolutely top of mind now. And we want to make sure that we provide consistent security as well as consistent user experience no matter where these users are. So if they're moving between you know, home or the office, um, we need to make sure that we're applying the same security uh, to each one of these things. So on, on one side, we have um, our cloud-based Fortis SASE. So this, this cloud, and we'll, we'll look at you know, kind of where these pops are distributed, um, you know, are basically global. You can, uh, you can reach them from anywhere. Uh, and then from your on-prem network, wherever those happen to be, um, you, you have, uh, let's say, existing SD-WAN. You may not even have to have SD-WAN, but if you do have an existing network, you can connect it through our secure private access. And this is what really bridges the two together. Um, we, you know, it's going to, it's, uh, when we see it on, on, on the, um, on the demo, it's more than just this one dotted line. You know, we have multiple connections coming from different locations to your different hubs within, within there in order to provide redundancy. Um, but the main reason for having this secure private access is because, you know, these remote users need access to your applications that may be private. Now, some of these may be in the cloud and maybe they can, you know, you can, you can still have your cloud data centers off of this thing here and, and still reach those there. But in general, most of your private applications may not be publicly exposed to the world. So uh, as you need access to these applications, we want to provide access to them. And as we you know, talked about before, uh, ZTNA, Zero Trust Network Access, is the mechanism that we're using to provide um, higher levels of security than just pure VPN by itself. And we'll have examples for these first three applications. We'll be using ZTNA, and the last application will just be using VPN. Um, with our solution, ZTNA is not a all-on, all-off thing. You can add applications to the mix, and if you need to, uh, still have some applications available via VPN. Maybe because you haven't migrated them, or you don't want to do that all in one big swoop, and you want to do a phased approach. You can absolutely do that. All right. Um, let's see. I should close these windows. I was going to reopen them. Together until I got this. Definitely. So let's do that. We're going to log into uh, Fortisassi. So I'm going to log into our cloud service here. Remember my passwords. All looks good. All right. So this is you know just our kind of our, our cloud management uh, um, uh, portal. And you know we have a number of different cloud services that we have available that are um, you know services in the cloud. I, uh, I know earlier uh, there was a question about you know our Forta Manager is you know is it on prem? Is it in the cloud? Uh, you know we absolutely have our on on you know in cloud presence that is available here. If you have it on prem, obviously it's not going to be in this menu. But uh, we also have a number of cloud services you know uh, you know uh, different uh, functionality service. In this case, we're going to be looking at Forta Sassy. So open a new window. Now the 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 view that we're going to see here is really what the administrator sees. It's not you know necessarily the end user experience. We'll we'll see the end user experience um, you know towards the towards the uh, the end of the demo. But I'm going to kind of go through what the um, the the Fortisassi UI looks like, what onboarding a client into um, uh, Fortisassi uh, has, and what uh, you know like and how it connects over to our SD WAN. So this is this is our our login and and so I, I promised to look at our cloud regions. 
So, so these, these are the cloud regions that we have, and I'll, I'll probably open up the separate tab so we can see it in a, in a bigger view. But you know, these are the different locations that are available as well as the services. You know, just the portal, everything's up and running. If we click on this, and if you can see this URL, you, can, you feel free to go there on your own, and you can see the status of our, our different regions as well as our opaque cloud regions and the SASE services. Um, but and the difference between opaque cloud and the other cloud regions, I understand opaque was the acquisition, correct. And, right? So what's the difference between that and your other? It, it, it's really just what's on the back end um, for us to differentiate. In, in, the, in the future, we are going to uh, be, yeah. you know, kind of merging everything together so it doesn't make a difference at, at this point. Okay. Um, there, there may be another one as we are expanding the footprint of our POPs. Um, right, right now, uh, the, we are adding kind of like a second tier, which are you know, an, a large number of AWS POPs. And so they'll probably be in a separate category just so you know if you're connected to a primary or a secondary. And, and at that point, the, the opaque ones may move into the primary group because we'll have the AWS ones as, as secondary. Okay. Um, and if we look at our managed endpoints over here, uh, we can see that we've just got three that are, that are on. Is it just a, a DNS process for the clients to, to find the closest? Correct. Yes, we're we're using global global DNS to you know uh, associate where you are with whatever is closest. Okay. Uh, so we have we have three here today. We'll we'll, we'll see a fourth because we're going to add add one to the uh, add one to the mix. Can we expand on that for a second? Sure. Uh, so you're doing like a global load balancing or global DNS to mm -hmm. get people where they need to go. Um, do you have options for to kind of force clients to a particular yes. uh, data center for like things like data sovereignty? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, let me. I think. I think mine is set for. Um, I'm trying to remember where it is in here. I have to come back to that. There. I'll, I'll see it in the menu and be like, oh yeah, that's a thing. But but <laughs> yes. Yeah, so so, so on the on, uh, on the onboarding, it will you know like you have a global one which will give you the closest one as well as individual region uh you know region based ones which will connect you to those regions so you can configure those as well um on the security side so this is just the security dashboard so we can see some of the things that are on here so for our internet security you know we have these particular services enabled and if you're familiar with the fortigate and the different um uh, next generation firewall services we offer these are you know a whole bunch of them you know that are that are all here and it's the same 40 os in Fortisassi, that is on our Forty Gates. Um, this, you know, like uh, I'll, we'll get into the configuration in a little bit, but you know, this is just tells you what's on. I can also see the vulnerability summary of the clients that are connected right now. We've got a few that are, you know, that have uh, vulnerable clients um, that have some low, medium, and high vulnerabilities, but no critical vulnerabilities right now. And on this side, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, we have our private access one. So this is just again on the dashboard. What what the private access um, uh, security configuration is. If, if you noticed, one of the things that went away uh, is web content filter because I don't feel that I need to do web content content filter into my private data access. Seems seems uh, uh, not useful, and we'll see the configuration of this in a moment. All right. So if we do that, we go to the configuration for. Oh, there it is. Access users. Okay. Here, wait. Let me jump over there. Is that the right one? No, that's not it. Never mind. All right. So this is the configuration for the security itself. Now, again, if you're familiar with uh, you know, the, the FortiGate user interface, this is organized a little bit differently because the, the workflows that people have for the cloud are very different than what they have for a lot of their on-prem devices. So here, you know, these are just you know, you know, big kind of on-off buttons um, Uh, uh, for for different uh, features func functionality, uh, AV web content filter intrusion protection stuff like that, and if we look at it, if we look at the configuration itself, um, this is very similar to what we have in 40 OS. So if we're looking at say the the web the uh, web content filters, um, you know we have the same category because because it is 40 OS, it's the same threat intelligence from FortiGuard that's behind it. So we have consistent level of security you know, between the cloud service as well as the on-prem service. Um, and, you know, that's, that's very different. I mean, you know, even between, you know, obviously different between different security vendors, the threat intelligence is not always the same. Uh, sometimes between different vendors, 
individual products, they are not necessarily the same. They don't come from the same source, but ours do. So, you know, like we'll see all of the, you know, in this particular case, you know, we're, we're monitoring some things, blocking other things, warning for certain, certain categories. Again, all very configurable for whatever you need, um, you know, on your network. Um, IPS and, oh, did I, no, it's on certificate. Oh, okay, yeah, so that's, that's, a, that's a low number. All right, so um, we also have uh, one, of our, one of our things on here is application control, which has our inline CASB. So with our 40 OS uh, 7.2, we added our inline CASB, which basically allows control of a lot of different SaaS services uh, you know, through the 48 being in line, basically being a reverse proxy that's in, in front. And obviously, because all, you know, all these cloud services are you know, SWG based, it makes perfect sense to have those things in there. But as you can see right now, it's telling me that Oh, I, there's 110 cloud applications that I'm not seeing because I don't have DLS inspection turned on. So that's what we're going to do. So we're just going to turn that on. And again, you guys have been very good about asking questions. So feel free to stop me or, you know, like if there's something else you want to see, just throw that in there. Um, just like on the FortiGate, we can have uh, exemption, ho uh, exempted hosts and categories. You can create those on the fly. But all I'm doing is just clicking deep inspection, clicking OK. That's all I have to do to turn on TLS inspection. Nothing, nothing else is, uh, is really required. So inline CASB is a relatively new feature. Uh -huh. um, where are you at from granularity perspective? Because that's always a, a spectrum, right? Like it, it for, is for controls, individual controls and apps. You know? So, so the good thing is, while it's a relatively new feature because we've named it as such, it's not relatively new technology. We've had a lot of these things already in our application control because we're a layer, you know, layer seven next generation firewall. So for things like um, let's say uh, uh, Dropbox or OneDrive, we have different granularity in the application visibility to say, uh, I can control uploads and downloads and chat and logins all separately. And those are the same controls that we have for inline CASB. Again, it's just been rebranded under that name for, the, for those things. We also do have a separate for the CASB product uh, which is a API-based CASB control, so that's not inline. So that has different controls because depending on the CASB service, um, they'll have different APIs exposed. Is that managed through the same portal, or is that like a completely separate thing? That, that it is, it, CASB Forta CASB is separate because it is a separate portal because it's API-based and not, not inline. Okay. And that's checking for things like uh, going and reviewing like S3 buckets for data. Correct. Out there. Yeah, and making sure your permissions are set correctly. Yeah. So as an example, that's one thing that inline CASB doesn't really do because it's not able to scan all your permissions. But from an API-based one, I can say, hey, check all the file permissions for whatever they are. Tell, give me the result and tell me if anything's bad. Mm -hmm. So that you know, that's one of the big differentiators between the two and why we have both sides of those products because neither one covers both cases. So. Okay. Um, so through this, through this uh, uh, demo site, I have a lot of traffic that's already been running. Um, you know, now that we've turned on SSL inspection, we're going to see some more stuff. But we're going to um, uh, go through and take a look at our ZTNA stuff right now. All right. So if we take a look back at our diagram. So remember, this, this secure private access single tunnel, um, if we go to our network configuration and private access, so this is where we configure the link between our SASE and on-prem networks. So if you have, um, uh, if you have whatever your remote gateway, in, uh, right now I, I, you can have a primary and redundant hub. Uh, I, this one's already configured, but if you do configure, say, the redundant hub, you're going to you know, add a number of things. You're going to add with the remote gateway, your, your pre-shared key for things, um, and your network overlay. So because we're going to be doing BGP to announce routes in and out of these things to make sure that we can reach, you know, obviously your internal resources. Because you know we're we ha we have our own networks, and there's a few few things that you know you need to have exempt that we're using internally. But that that gives you what you know what the main connection is. And and from here you can see what the you know the four the four different locations where we're reconnecting into your network are these four. And if you have a uh, primary and redundant hub, there will be eight total um, IPsec links back into your network, which this, this over here represents all of those things. So can I ask? Sure. Is the, I saw that there is then the, the, this trick for the pre-shared key, meaning that the only way device authenticate towards a hub or any other member of the, the network, the secure network, is through a pre-shared key. So, something with certificates or anything similar? So, so that, that is true from this user interface today. So remember I said the, the SASE user interface is designed for a certain set of cloud customers that are usually on the smaller side. 
Um, it is 40 OS underneath the covers. We have the capability of using certificates and everything that we do on, on the on the FortiGate uh, side to do that. It's just not exposed through this interface. Um, one of the things, and I'll I'll probably preempt this question because you know mm -hmm. as I say it, you'll say, well, you know, is that the case today? Um, <laughs> the you know the Forti Manager would be mm -hmm. the right tool to manage you know all of your FortiGates if you wanted to do your certificate uh, IPsec tunnel um, uh, components. Um, right now, we are in the process of of making that integration work all the way across through this, through to FortiSassy. So, with your on-prem networks over here, so that you know your Forti manager that's man managing that, we also want to be able to manage this here. And and all of the configuration and policy that I push there, I want to be able to push to the same FortiSassy instance that we have right now, which would include things like those certificate-based. Okay, um, so that's going to be something that would happen. In the yes, short term, I believe. Correct. Okay. But for the Forti SASE user interface, mm -hmm. again, people on the cloud based management, they want simple. Uh, and, you know, it was one of our challenges because we have so much features and functionality. Um, if you want to use Forti Manager Cloud and, and put all those things there, that you get the complexities of, of doing that full management. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so you can say, well, hey, yeah, certificate based. Um, uh, 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 VPN tunnels isn't represented here, but the use case for most of the SASE uh, end users, you know, the businesses, is not really going that far. But mm -hmm. we do recognize that that is a need, and that's why the Forta Manager side is going to come in and fill that gap. Okay, thank you. Sure. So when we talk about private access here, um, just to understand, because there's now several different models for, for remote mm -hmm. access. This is like traditional IPsec VPN from end users that terminates in the cloud and then gets brought back? Not necessarily. Okay. It, it can be, but it's not. So what this is, is the VPN connectivity between our cloud and the customer's network, sure. providing that connectivity. But when we're talking about ZTNA or SASE, so, um, you know, Rami did not get to go into like some of the, the kind of the architecture pieces for that, but for zero trust network access, there's really three components that are required. One is some kind of endpoint because you need to basically push out some device certificates and I want to authenticate, I want to continually verify all that kind of stuff. I need some kind of policy management and then I need some kind of endpoint enforcement. Those are the three things that I need for ZTNA and that's pretty much everybody's ZTNA solution. So in our case, we have an endpoint which is on the, these endpoints here. Our EMS that's in the cloud is our uh, our policy uh, coordination, and then our enforcement is in FortiSassy, is in FortiOS. So whether it's in FortiSassy or the on-prem network, those are the three pieces that you need. Now, for SASE, it's the it's it's those same three components, except that FortiOS is here in in here. So that's one of the reasons why it's all combined and it makes sense. So when people are connecting into FortiSassy, they are doing zero trust into FortiSassy, and then that's extending, if I have ZTNA enabled all the way through to my network, I'm doing ZTNA all the way across. Sure, so maybe let me rephrase the okay. question. That connection from that end client into FortiSassy is IP-based, not proxy-based. So there are multiple ways of doing VPN mm -hmm. or remote access, or some people call it ZTNA. There's, you can sure. put whatever terminology mm -hmm. you want around it. The actual connection mechanism, there's two primary ways. Yes. I can use, these are my interesting networks that are inside. That's the VPN we've done for 25 years. Mm -hmm. Like, yep, we connect that way. Here are my interesting networks that goes across the VPN tunnel and then filtering happens as soon as I hit the VPN concentrator. Mm -hmm. Or you have the proxy based, which I don't even know what the internal IP is. I don't care what the client IP is. The things get married in the cloud. Mm -hmm. And then that connection gets brokered. This is not a brokered connection model. This is a, a network connection model. This is, this is a brokered connection model into FortiSassy because if they're going out to the internet, it is SWG. And, and we're, not, we're not changing the mechanism whether you're going this direction or this direction, right? So th it remains the same. So, so the, the connection between here and here, while it is a proxied connection, you know, we are going, we are going to a proxy to that. The connection to it is not your standard proxied connection. It is a individual uh, uh, built-up uh, SSL tunnel for each connection that we do. Okay, so a little bit of light bulb here. There's not a VPN connection in this area. You have to have an endpoint client, the piece of software on your endpoint for that connection model. Let me ask this question. Mm -hmm. um, maybe a little bit different because it's not just like remote access, but into your SASE cloud, do you allow other connectivity models in, meaning that yes. like, like if I have, if I run not Fortinet SD-WAN, mm -hmm. insert any other vendor, yep. can I use your SASE product, your secure um, 
your your secure filtering cloud-based security product. Mm -hmm. And I connect in with IPsec tunnels into that or? So no, you cannot connect into IPsec tunnels in it, but you can connect with explicit proxy. So you can use proxy-based settings to get in just like a normal SWG. Which but, would be SWIG, but not some of the other capabilities. Correct. It, you, don't, you, don't get the, you don't get the ZTNA part. You don't get device certificates and things like that. But you do get the normal uh, next generation firewall capabilities and security that's in the Fortis SASE cloud. And also you do get access into the on-prem as long as from a ZTNA perspective, you do allow that use case. Cause you can, you can choose whether you allow that or not. Sure, that's yeah. up to you. Okay. Can I, can I that make sense? To just two things through that. So I think I, I do want to clarify that we do support agent less. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, right? explicit process. Remote access. Correct. Yeah. We okay. do support agent less. Yeah. And, uh, there are different terms. As I say, again, the SaaS has been so different way defined by different analysts, different sure. vendors. We believe in a term called single vendor SaaS. <laughs> that makes sense for what yeah. you provide, yeah. yeah. Okay. And, uh, Gartner's term, not ours. And as part of that, uh, yes, that's why I think it is right now Fortinet centric. Yes. In fact, one of the big questions that have been asked by our sd wan customers, so we have over 30,000 sd wan customers. As they have deployed their network, and when their users go remote, how easily we can allow them that private access. And they really like that integration of whenever they are out, they can just connect back via SASE, connect all application. So we believe in that kind of architecture. And that's why we are right now, this focus has been around the Fortinet uh, ecosystem. But yes, it can change as we go in the future. Yeah. I just want to point out this. Uh, so here, this is the SWG configuration. Since it, we asked about it earlier, how do you configure, you know, different locations? So this is our global DNS, and these are the uh, uh, mines configured for just US-based ones. Um, but this would be your your SWG configuration. You can have a pack file, or you can, you know, put these in explicitly yourself. Um, all right. Let me jump into ZTNA and get some of those pieces on here. So I am going to quickly zip through the ZTNA tags. So from a ZTNA perspective, uh, what we're really doing is we're looking for the endpoint to um, take a lot of the the um, onboarding and make, making sure we have some of these things. So I've created a number of tags in here, like this one, Huli Compliance, which just basically says I've joined the Huli domain and I have AV running. That will that the endpoint client will offer up that tag if that's true. Um, for IT, as an example, very similar. I'm logged into domain. Uh, I'm, I'm using the for a client EMS. And the last one we'll look at over here from, a, from this one. Is, this one is a little bit more complicated. You know, BitLocker. And you can make these as complicated as you want. I, I use some as simple examples at first. Um, but you can create a number of different and or policies for different things. So, you know, we talked about the different operating systems that were supported. So, you know, we have a bunch of different uh, uh, capabilities on each one. So if we just look at the OS, so oh, that's not what I want there. So like for Windows, Mac, oh, come on, Mac, to click it twice. And Linux, to click it twice, OS, and Android. So these are all different things that, you know, just from a, from a perspective, you can make these as complicated as you want, or when you're creating the policy, you can use a combination of the tags. It just depends on how you want to do this. But this is the you know, ZTNA function that is, is uh, provided in there. And then from an endpoint perspective, we are going to um, uh, provide different uh, features and functionality. So some of the, the normal VPN pieces that you have, you know, do you want to connect to the always on VPN? Do you want to split tunnel? There may be some you know, definite use cases where we still want to do that. Um, what kind of protection do you want to turn on? In this case, we just have everything turned on. Uh, are we going to use a sandbox? In this case, we're using the Fortis SASE Cloud Sandbox, uh, but you could use a sandbox on-prem if you wanted. And then finally, just some additional ZTNA connection rules, which we'll see in a moment. All right, now we'll see if the display cooperates with us in changing the page. So I'm going to quickly show some onboarding. So we can see right now that this one is not connected. So you know, there's not uh, we don't have anything that's uh, it's just Forta Client has been installed. Um, you could put the the cloud management, but there's also an invitation code which is also in the user interface. I've already put it in there, so we don't have to waste time getting it. But as I hit connect, what it's going to do? It's going to connect to our SASE cloud. Um, pretty soon, the the client will say, "Oh, you know, I've just received. You know, I'm I'm now managed." If we look over here right now, we only see remote access. But remember that profile that we just looked at? That's what is getting basically put pushed down. 
So we should see another pop-up that says, you know, you've gotten some new uh, updates, but basically now we have our remote access. We can see our ZTNA destinations. These are the ones that we saw before. Uh, we can see that sandboxing is enabled, uh, you know, all of those things there. And if we go back to our user, we can see that now we are online and we're on Fabric and we have one zero trust tag. So all of those things, now when I try and connect, it will have one of those things uh, available. Um, again, in the interest of time, I'm going to skip some NGFW stuff going back and looking at our TLS. But the important thing was it was TLS 1.3, and now we're seeing a whole bunch of malware <laughs> because we turned on TLS inspection because it was all TLS encrypted before. Um, let me get these clients up and running and see if they all pop up in a reasonable fashion. Okay, looks good. So we want to start with not this one. This one. So this should be Rob. So uh, if we jump, I'll see if this works well in switching back. Just a quick refresher over to this. So we've got Rob and Ron over here off fabric, and we've got Mark and Katie on fabric. Uh, th those that's that's who we have remote desktops to over here. So if we look at if we look at um, um, Rob here, we can see that he's off fabric. Um, he's in the uh, IT group, and he has uh, endpoint compliance and IT infosec as a tag. Um, and if I go to a, a number of apps, which uh, uh, if you remember from the diagram, there are four apps. Three of them are, are protected by a ZTNA. The fourth one is not. It's just regular VPN. So the first one that we're looking at is for engineering tools and I have to present my device certificate. The presenta presentation of the device certificate can be automated, which we'll see on one of the other clients. But because um, um, Rob is in IT, he does not get access to the engineering tools. And let me go over and do all of these ones. And this last one, there is no ZTNA, so it didn't ask me for the certificate. But I can see that we've hopefully logged into our Forta Analyzer. Uh, our ZTNA works with SAML and SSO, so I've, I've basically, I didn't have to log in the Forta Analyzer, I logged in via SSO and it logged in with my account. Same thing with Splunk, uh, it automatically logged me in as well. And then the Forta client itself just logged, you know, I, I'm able to get to their, that web page without presenting the device certificate because it is just available via VPN. As I said, you can do a phased approach in putting in applications, you don't have to put them all in at once. And if we find, Ron over here, Ron is in engineering. He is also off fabric, so he's got these two tags and we'll do the same thing. With uh, the, this Chrome browser, I've automated the certificate issuance. Uh, basically, if I only have one, it says it'll just give that one out. So now uh, he's able to get to the engineering site, but not able to get to the, the FAS or Splunk, but can get to Forta Client, no, no issues there. Um, we won't look at, uh, oh, where'd he go? Mark and seven. Uh, we'll just point out that uh, Mark is has the vulnerable tag. He wouldn't be able to get to anything. Well, actually, no. I want to say I don't want to do it, but then I do want to do it. So let's just let's just make him do it. Um, he's not going to be able to get to any of those sites except for that last one because there was no ZTNA on there. So I'll just do this one over here. Over here, he's going to get denied because he's vulnerable. But this last one, he can get to. Again, VPN doesn't prevent you, doesn't do anything from, from a tagging perspective. 